Hey all, hope you uh, have had a good Sunday so far, a good time worshiping with your church family and looking forward to the Super Bowl, or maybe for some of you not so much. Um, here in Kansas City we're kind of hurting that the Chiefs are not in the Super Bowl. I'm not the hugest Chiefs fan, but uh, I kind of feel the communal uh, grief that goes along with it. But hope you are looking forward to this coming week and thinking specifically this week about uh, Colossians, Philippians, and Philemon will be applying the course objectives to understanding and applying these books of Scripture. Um, so as usual, uh, you will want to try to wrap your mind around the big picture of these books. Um, I'll just give you my very brief understanding of how I would put these books together, which I'm still, of course, growing in. Um, but Colossians is a lot like Ephesians, which I understand to be about the building up of this temple uh, to the glory and praise of God with Christ as the head. Colossians is very similar, but with less temple imagery, but the idea of a cosmic Christ is still very much present. In Colossians, there seems to also be a heresy going on, uh, worshiping angels, you'll read stuff like that. This is a book uh, by Clinton Arnold, uh, the Colossian Syncretism, uh, very good. He uh, investigates Jewish sources, uh, pagan, Gentile sources, and uh, even local stuff like inscriptions in Colossae and, um, or places around there, and detects uh, what's going on as essentially folk religion that has resonances in folk Judaism and folk uh, paganism, uh, meaning a local representation of religious thought that seems to be seeping into the Colossian church. Uh, part of that is a fear over the, um, the spiritual forces of darkness. And you'll notice in Colossians that Paul says that Christ has redeemed us uh, for inheritance in the sphere of light. Um, so this imagery of Christ as exalted over every power and authority um, is very needed for the Colossian believers. For Philippians, the way I understand that, that book is very much about a fellow partnership brought about for the advancement of the gospel in which the bad things are really the good things. Paul is, says he's imprisoned, but this has actually turned out for the advancement of the gospel. Uh, he says that death is gain of all things. And you'll see a lot of irony in how God has chosen to advance his gospel. You'll see words like fellowship, which is really more of an idea in Philippians of partnership. You'll see fellow soldier, fellow, uh, fellow slave, fellow worker. These are, are terms that uh, associate the church together. It was used in the military, especially fellow, fellow worker and fellow soldier were used in the Roman military. Uh, Philippi is a veterans colony, meaning that people from uh, who served the Roman army were stationed and given plots of land in this colony. And Paul takes full advantage of uh, that military language to talk about a partnership for the advance of the gospel. Just like you would advance in a war, that's the way Paul talks about the gospel in Philippians. Uh, in Philemon, uh, you'll, I'm sure, be impressed with Paul's incredible rhetoric by which he is able to, without directly demanding that Philemon accept Onesimus, his runaway slave, as a brother in Christ, he essentially guarantees that Onesimus is going to do just that. It is a um, timeless... Um, a timeless study of the art of um, of persuasion and of rhetoric, and but he doesn't do it so uh, manipulatively as uh, we might think of that. But he appeals to him genuinely as a brother, and that bond that they have uh, essentially guarantees that uh, Philemon will comply with Paul's wishes, uh, and. As we think about slavery and issues like that, I think Philemon is uh, definitely, while first century slavery is different from what we think of in the uh, antebellum South, 
I think it helps us to think of these issues and how the Bible would go about addressing slavery in a society, which is essentially that among brothers in Christ, we are all equal, uh, as has famously been said many times in American history, all men are created equal. So hope you enjoy studying these books um, and your continued study. You have, as usual, your choice between contextualized application assignments, can choose pastor, teacher, or scholar uh, any week. Uh, you'll also have your first test, which uh, is going to ask you to locate uh, specific verses and passages uh, as to where they belong, uh, what book they belong to. Um, so have people quiz you, um, make sure you understand the big picture of those books. That will help you so much, I can't stress it enough, in being able to place individual thoughts uh, if you know the big picture argument of the book. So hope this week uh, goes well for you. Hope you continue to enjoy, and as always, let me know if you have any questions.